Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Bomber by Motorhead. Now this is an all-time classic Motorhead tune and definitely one that I reckon you want to try and wrap your ears around. So go and have a listen to it and see if you can work it out first of all. Uh, it's normally played with an E-flat tuning, okay? So I'm going to be showing it to you the part that was actually played. If you don't want to go through having to tune down a semitone just if, and you want to play along with the record, just play everything I show you down one fret and you can play along. So it's, there's not too much open string stuff going on here that you have to worry about too much. So uh, there's two riffs. The first, the first riff in the tune is kind of the main guitar part riff, which is, uh, uh, I th I'm pretty sure Lemmy's holding down the bottom end of the chord. So the guitar part for a B chord, okay, so it's based around a B. Um, the guitar part is playing the ninth fret on the fourth and fifth strings. Okay, just those two notes. So there would be the root note for the B at the seventh fret on the thicker string. If you wanted to be real clever, you could try and play it with your thumb. But that does make it significantly more difficult. And I don't think that's what's going on on the record. I, again, I'm pretty sure it's Lemmy's playing the, the bass notes. So, now these would both be played with upstrokes as well. So an upstroke starting on the fourth string. So fourth and fifth strings only two upstrokes, then third finger moves down to play the second and third strings with a down pick on those two notes, and then first finger is barring the seventh fret second and third strings, and second finger does a trill, which is like a ha very fast hammer and, hammer and flick offs on the eighth fret of the third string. Yeah, definitely worth a little bit of practice on that first. Okay, so the, the fourth and fifth strings, up strokes, three, four, and one, and two is the, the second and third strings are coming on beat two with a down pick. And then beat three is when we've got this little hammer on with the second finger on the uh, uh, second finger on the eighth fret of string three while first finger bars the seventh fret. So that whole rhythm, if I do it nice and slowly and count it out now, so three, four, and one, and two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, three, and one, and two, three, four, and one, and two. And then we simply move that whole thing back two frets to the kind of A position. Back to B. And now we've got the second section, uh, which is uh, the kind of the chorus, I guess, which is E. D. D chord, then back to riff. Okay, so look, D, two bars, one, two, three, four, that's two bars on D, back to E for two, one bar of C, one bar of D, and back to riff. So that's pretty much the whole tune. There's a few little variations there on the chord sections. Uh, when you want to play, if you're playing underneath the solo uh, guitar part, the E to D, sometimes that section doesn't go all of the way down to the C chord. It just bounces around between the E and the D. It depends on the version that you want to listen to, whether you're going for the original recorded version or one of the live ones. But again, listen to the original recording and have a go through. That They're the puzzle pieces you need. And you really, if you're going to get into this style of music, you've got to be using your ears and you've got to be listening to the original recording. So with those two pieces have a listen to the original and see if you can fit them together and work out where there are slight variations of that how long it's how many times it's played on the b how many times it's played on the a how many times that sequence goes through before it goes to the b section of the chorus how many times through the chorus does it ha happens when the solos are happening what's happening underneath the solo what's the chord progression and then if you're up for it have a go at transcribing some of the solos because there's always great kind of rock bluesy rock riffs to learn and licks to learn in um, in motorhead tunes i really do recommend trying to learn as many motorhead songs as you can using just your ears it's a really really important part of learning to play guitar particularly if you want to play rock guitar i think you know learning to listen to the band and hear out the accents and stuff like that it's, it seems kind of wrong to write it down or to try and teach it this way because it's just it's simple rock and roll and it's it's much better learned by getting the vibe of the the recording you know and playing along with it and picking up those you know the the 
a lot of the accent patterns and even in this song in the in that b section there's accents that you play even though it's just down and up strumming basically on every chord there are little subtle accents there that you want to pick up when you're listening to the drums and you listen to the bass and the way it all sits together and while I, I guess I could try and teach it to you, I think it, it'll be better for you to learn it by listening because that's how, you know, Lemmy didn't use the internet and get tabs of the bands that he liked, you know. It didn't didn't work that way. So I think it's really worth trying to get into the spirit of that and, and learn some of this music that way as well and le learning stuff by ear. I think it's really important. So, uh, look, I really hope you dig this lesson. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Do subscribe if you dig what I do. I much appreciate it. See you for...